Okay, we are on the desk and we are trying to uh, implement lab number two. Uh, before we start, take a look at your box. Uh, the first one is 4.7, 6 6.8, 10, 10, 15, 22. In lab number two, you are going to utilize possibly the six components you see in the uh, third column of this fixed resistor box. Well, in order for me to do this, all I have to do is to build this system on the first loop. After I build this system, I'm going to augment the system with these two resistors. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is actually do the outer limit of this circuit and then put this resistor in between. In order to do that, you need to always identify this node. Where is this node? So if you are doing, for example, the outer limit, this node would be the intersection of R1 and R3. You need to find that in order to connect it to R2. Similarly, you need to know where node B is in order to be able to connect that. For me, it seems to be a lot easier to actually build the first loop and augment the design using the second loop. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This time, I'm going to be conscious about the polarity of components and the power supply. I'm coming in from the plus side of the power supply to R1, which is 4.7K. Doesn't matter which end at this time. It's just coming in. I know that this is going to be, according to the notation of the lab, is going to be the plus side of the resistor. 4.7 then goes into R2. That's loop number one. R2 is 15K. I find 15K. That's going to be the fifth element. That's 15K. So what did I do? Power supply, R1, R2. Then I'm going to go and have R5. R5 is 6.8. So I'm going to have R5, R2 going into 6.8. This is the other end of the R2 and it's going into 6.8. And finally, the other end of the power supply is going to come in and actually go into this end. Uh, take a look at my hand. The positive goes into 4.7. 4.7 goes into 15K. 15K comes into 6.8. 6.8 goes back into the system. So that's my loop. I need to attach R3. R3 is actually attached on the B node. B node is the other side of 4.7. You see, 4.7 is connected to the power supply, and obviously the intersection of R1, R2, or the other side of R1 is the point of interest. I need to find this in order to get the R3 connected. So let's take a look. It's going to be this is the power supply that comes into 4.7. Then it goes into 15. That's my point of uh, connection. This is the intersection of R1 and R2. I need that intersection to be utilized. I'm going to take that intersection, and I'm going to put that into R3. R3 is 10K, so I'm going to use the 10K. These are one node, you can see, this one is actually a short node now, okay? Now from the other end of the 10K, I get into R4, R4 is 22. So from the other end of the 10K, I go into 22. From the other end of the 22, I go into node D. Node D is the intersection of R2 and R5. R2 is 15K, R5 is going to be 6.8, 15 and 6.8. Um, I need to find it. 15 and 6.8. Do you see this black line? This black line in my connection now connects 15 and 6.8. If I connect this, my circuit is now ready. Okay. So what do I have to do? I'm going to start measuring the voltages. First, I'm going to record the voltages of all the components. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to start measuring, and this time measuring it very carefully. I could do measuring according to the way I actually 
implemented this. You remember I implemented this this way, and then I talked this, uh, got this, uh, this segment added to it. So it's plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. If I wanted to apply KVL law, this KVL law should hold. So let's go plus minus, and then plus minus, and then plus minus. So let's see what happens. So this one, first of all, power supply. Red to red, black to black. Power supply is supposed to be, uh, for example, in this case, 20 volts. So I'm going to go and make sure I read 20 volts on the power supply. Ah, that's good enough. So that's my 20 volt power supply. Then I'm going to go exactly the same way I did on the resistor, 4.7 power supply. The other end, 4.3. Then I'm going to do the voltage across R2. R2 is going to be that node I just left and the node D, which I remember would be this node. So that's this one. That's another one. And then from node D, you can see I can hold my node and replace it with the black. And then it's going to be R5, and R5 is 6.8. The other end of this is, this is already connected to 6.8. So that's one and this one. I've got that voltage. And you can see if you add them up, you're going to get 20. Now let's go back again. The node R3, this is the voltage. That's the inter intersection. I found it. I'm going to hold the red one. Node C is the other end of R3. I'm going to read that. R3 is 10. This is connected to 10 already. I need to find the other end. The other end would be here. That's this voltage. Now I'm going to actually switch over so you can see this one is going to come in. And then I'm going to go into R4. R4 is going to be R4 is going to be 22. So this is already connected and this is 22. These are all component voltages, okay? The other thing I have to do is to measure node voltages. The lab says, for example, node B, or someone says node A. You need to find that node, the reference node. So in this case, say, for example, if it says node B, I'm going to find the intersection of R1, R2, R3. This is node, node B. This is node B, this part. This intersection is going to be node B. So let's find it. You said 4.7 is coming from the power supply and eventually going through either a 10K or a 15K. So that's my node B. I'm going to hold on to node B. I'm going to make sure it's well inside. Then I'm going to use my red pin and I'm going to go through all the components. This one is node A. Fine, that's positive. Let's just mine. Let's go node C is the other end of our T, which is going to be 10K. So if you like, take a look at this, this one is going to go 10K, the other side. I expect this to be negative. It is negative. Then I'm going to say node D. Node D is the other end of the R2. R2 is going to be 15K. Let's locate that. This is 15K, already connected to 4.7. The other end, I expect this to be negative. That's very nice. Now I want node E. Node E is going to be the other end of the power supply. I'm done. OK? But suppose that the lab asks you to have a different type of a reference node. Suppose that the lab asks you, or the lab test, that this this end of the power supply is going to be your reference node. So I'm going to have that end identified. I'm going to identify that end. Well, one of you is going to hold on to this, hold on to this tight, and this one is going to move around. First, node A is the other end of the power supply. Happy, it's 20, that's what it's supposed to be. Node B, actually when this E is a reference node, all the voltages are supposed to be positive in that sense. So let's do node B. Node B is the intersection of 4.7, R2, and R3. That's 15. Node C is R3 and R4. I need to identify. R3 is 10, R4 is going to be 22. 10 and 22, where is that? This red one. 
this red one, 10 and 22. That's node C. Where is node D? D is R2 and R5. R2 is 15, R5 is 6.8. Tell me 15 and 6.8. 15 and 6.8, this red one. That's this one. And I'm done. So regardless of what the reference point is, you just make sure you identify that reference point. You keep this on that, you or your friend, and this red one is actually going to go around and actually measuring all the voltages according to, in respect to, the reference node. So that's my voltages. I want to measure the currents. <clears throat> I'm going to set this up. I'm going to make sure this is set for an ammeter. The positions are properly placed. So I'm going to have this set properly. <clears throat> the question is, what do you want to measure? Which line do you want to measure? When I say I1, take a look at I1. I1 is actually coming from the power supply. So if I cut the power supply, I'm going to get my I1 done. I'm going to cut the power supply, the positive end. The current, as you can see, is coming from the positive. So the red goes into red, and I'm holding it, and the black goes into the wire. I just cut it, 0 0.925. Extremely important to know what you're trying to do this time. It's not as easy and simple as lab number one. When I want to do R3, for example, let's do R3. R3 is 10K. I need to go from node B to node C according to this direction. I need to find node B, and then I need to basically find node C, and basically in one end, that's how my ammeter is going to be. I need to cut the line, node B and R3, 10K. Node B and R3, 10K. This is the one. This black one, which connects 4.7 to 10K, that's the line. If I ca cut this line, the 10K will not have any current to flow through. I want from node B to the 10K. That's my current. Let's go back again. <clears throat> now let's uh, find the current that goes through R5. R5 value is 6.8. I can either cut the line here and then measure the current that goes through this resistor, or I can cut the line here and then it goes to the power supply. Well, if I wanted to do this, let's take the challenge and find this line and cut this line and put an ammeter inside. So it's going to be D, which is the intersection of R2, R5, and R4. So R2 is going to be 15. R4 is going to be 22, and R5 is going to be 6.8. If you take a look at my design, 6.8, 10, and 22, this is the line. And your focus and attention is on 6.8. You cut this line, you go into the red of the ammeter, and you go into the 6.8 this time. That's the value. I don't have a power supply on, so let's turn this on. That's it. You can also do another way around. You can cut this line, go into the red, and come back into its position. You are supposed to get the same response. Thank you very much for paying attention to lab number two. It's a bit of a challenge because this time the polarity, directions, everything matters. Uh, we have going to uh, have a reference node for the uh, node voltages and component have assigned, they have been assigned the currents and therefore the voltages and polarities are all known. You need to be careful on this and that's why it's a bit challenging. Thank you and talk to you soon.